Katie, it's absolutely lovely to see you here at Collective Radio today. How have you been enjoying it so far? Oh, absolutely terrific. Had a wonderful day. I mean, because it's very warming to one's little soul to be able to sign and hug and, you know, see the joy on people's faces. And, of course, you've got tiny little kiddies who are watching the Sarah Jane adventures. And then you've got the older ones and, the older, and then the grandfathers, you know, my age group. Um, and it's wonderful. And you see whole families. And that's the thing about Doctor Who, that, you know, it brings together families in so many cases, because it used to be a show, they'd all sit down and watch it. And we've got out of that habit in television now. Everybody watches everything separately in another room. And the one thing about Doctor Who, it does bring the family back into the same room, you know, sharing the same program. Because when they did the announcement of the new Doctor, which I was on, I actually got me moment on that. Um, it was it was a joy because you suddenly thought all these people in this country are all gathered around the television, you know, whatever age, even people who don't really watch it. Everybody gathered to see who was going to be announced. I mean it's quite extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary, it really is. You mentioned the new doctor, of course we've got Peter Capaldi going to take his time in the TARDIS. What do you think about that? Oh, absolutely marvellous, because, I mean, you know, to be honest with you, every year, well, every year, whenever there's a new Doctor, we get the same old, you know, oh, why can't it be a woman? Well, it can't be a woman because it was written for a man, and uh, it doesn't do anything to our, to, to women's liberation to actually just cast it because it makes a mockery of it. Um, and, you know, what you need for the Doctor and what they always had and the extraordinary standard that has been kept right from 19... 1960 whatever to up till now has been marvellous marvellous creative actors young or old and Peter Capaldi I think is going to be he's a terrific actor he's a character actor and that's very much the requirement for Doctor Who you know Matt Smith as a young character actor I mean it's it's just remarkable and he is going to be stunning and anybody who stops watching because he's not eye candy really doesn't need to be watching the show anyway you know but I think when they see how remarkable this man's going to be and as I say you know John Pertwee was not exactly a young man but by God was he attractive you know the power of the doctor that's what's attractive you mentioned John Pertwee there what was he like to work with oh I mean he was funny he was creative he was loving, he had a very warped sense of humour like I have and we also, he encouraged me because I do voices, <laughs> I'm kind of known for my voices and uh, so he encouraged me to do them, I used to just do them for fun so we used to, when we were driving to location together we'd create all these amazing characters after names that we saw on signposts and things like that we had the best time, he really was and I learnt as an actress so much from him because of his experience and the years that he went back, you know, in terms of, you know, doing vaudeville and all those kind of things which were before my time. <laughs> and, you know, it was extraordinary. I mean, he really was a lovely man. And for him, it was his first really straight role as an actor. And it meant a lot to him. And I think it showed in the magnificently carefully placed performance you know, wonderful, wonderful man. Of course, obviously you're a companion to him on the show. And how did you go about creating your character and how much kind of input did you have to think into things like the look of your character? Well, it was my second job as an actress. I was very young and I was playing a character who, you know, had basically left school, done a year's training at which he'd failed on every level very miserably. You know, a little bit of escapology and things. But, you know, that was the great thing about her character. She wasn't that, you know, she wasn't academically very clever. And uh, I was given the part with no absolute you know, ground rules of how she should be played. I did lift my voice up slightly because it was a bit deep, my voice. John used to call it the lorry drivers out quick. We'll have to retake on that. So when, when I do the audios now, I, I do what I did back then, which was to lift my voice, you know, just to make Joe more kind of girly and less... <laughs> and um, it, it sort of grew... Because of, you know, obviously there were the guidelines that she'd been given, you know, when he says, oh, I thought you took 
A-level science and da da and she said, well, I didn't say I passed. And what was lovely, Jo was very young when she went into it, and you actually watched her grow up right in front of you on the screen. You know, she started to get a little bit more kind of self-belief in herself, and she started to, um, you could just literally see this girl grow up and and start to she was what was lovely too about joe was you know i think she had an she was funny she was quite feisty um she was i think i may be right in saying i don't think there was any other doctor who girl who offered her life for the doctors as many times which meant she had a great recognition of the importance of what he was doing in the universe and I think the fact that she went off and went up the Amazon and started to fight to save this planet was her way of what she'd learnt from the doctor she wanted to put into this planet which I thought was kind of wonderful um, and she was you know she was wonderfully brave and she did what companions should do she got herself into trouble so he could get her out you know I mean if your companions too smart and too capable it, 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 it takes away that what what do you do you know and um, yes yeah, so I think the companions are very important on that level and as a sort of you know a sparring partner for the doctor you know you it's like with comedians you got to have one who gives the feed and one who gives the punchline you know but I loved her and she was also very much of the moment you know with the clothes and the rings and all that kind of thing you know, she was, no, nah, she was cool. She was definitely cool. <laughs> I think so too. I mean, if you could come back in the show now or in the future, would you like to do that? And what kind of part would you like to play? Well, I came back in the Sarah Jane Adventures with Matt Smith. So I think that's called coming back, really. Um, and I think what Russell T. Davis gave was absolutely the per perfect story for Jo. I mean, she just dropped these wonderful children at the named them after towns like San Diego, you know, whatever. You know, she chained herself to Robert Mungabwe. She was, you know, he was, they were fighting to save forests and so on and so forth. Uh, and yet she was still very Joe. You know, she was still kind of funky and there, you know. Granny Groove. As <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I don't think I could have been given a better storyline in terms of how the character and the fact that she had stayed with her professor with cliff you know because she was so loyal to the doctor she would have been loyal to her husband you know and her 13 grandchildren and i just thought it was marvelous and to work with liz who i had, was good friends with and i just you know to me she was the quintessential Doctor Who girl in a sense. I, I really thought she was extraordinary and she kept that character so strongly for so many years, you know. Um, and for us to work together, and she said it was great because her character's quite serious and she said it was lovely having Joe's character there because she really lightened it all up, you know. Um, and it, it was a joy to do and to work with the extraordinarily creative Matt Smith. I mean, what a treat. So it means basically now I've worked with um, Pat Troughton, William Hartnell, John Pertwee, Matt Smith, and on audio, Colin Baker and Peter Davidson. So I've had quite an innings here, girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's credible, isn't it? Not, not many people can say that. No, no, darling. I'm just a doctor groupie. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do you find the whole world of those um, Big Finishes audio plays with Doctor Who? What do you enjoy about those in particular? I, well, I think it's marvellous. I mean, I actually originally refused to do it. Um, that's why I was very late coming into it. I mean, also, I've been living overseas for a lot of years. But um, every time I came back, you know, they'd say... And I said, no, I can't do Joe without John. Absolutely not. Um, I, I wouldn't even know how to start. And then one day, I read this particular script. And I, you know, I get to play John, and I get to play the brig, and I get to play the master, and every other male. <laughs> um, and I, 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 she was literally. David Richardson said to me, he said, "Well, she's right." I went straight into her. You know, it was like right there in the filing cabinet of characters. You know, because my my life, my career has been completely diverse since then. Uh, and then when I was doing the Iris Wild Time of course, you know, which I started out with Peter Davidson and I did with Con and I said I want to put her with Joe. 
as well. So that was lovely, and they let me do that. Um, so it's been very exciting, and you know, and doing the scorches, which is a completely bonkers one, which I have to keep saying to everyone, much as I totally respect Melvin Hayes, I did the scorches. It was me doing Cool Cat and all those other voices because that's what I love doing. But So I've been given some really kind of quirky ones and then to have Louise Jameson direct me and then I had Sophie Aldred as a guest in it. I mean, it's just wonderful. I love it and I think Big Finish have done some absolutely amazing things because they kept Doctor Who going actually when there wasn't, you know, quite the hype that it has around it now. So they, they really, you know, respect... <laughs> No, they absolutely do, and I know that the fans, all the fans of the show, absolutely believe that too, and they love them for that. Talking about kind of hype and, and the craziness of the 50th anniversary year, we've just had recently a mini episode with Paul McGann returning as the Doctor. I mean, what did you think about that? I think it's terrific. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I mean, he's a lovely actor. I never saw his Doctor Who, though, because I was out of the country. See, from uh, 1982 to... And then I was in America in the 90s. I don't know, right up to five years ago. Um, I, I mean, I saw when Christopher Eccleston came out of that, I went, yes, we're back, it's running. And it needed that rest. In my opinion, it needed to stop. And it needed to change and to grow up, which it's done brilliantly. And Eccleston was the, the best actor you could have chosen at that time for that moment, followed brilliantly by Tennant and so on and so forth. But he was the perfect one to open the door, I think. Um, and the writers are terrific and, you know, wonderful, the right producer. I mean, if it hadn't been for... Um, I don't think it would have been for, without Russell I don't think we'd be having the 50th today to be honest with you I mean I think he was absolutely and now of course you've got the wonderful Moffat I mean there's it, it's an extraordinary thing and it's done really well and I know that I will eventually see Paul McGann but it was completely out of my time because in living in Australia and America I wasn't getting it like you were getting it over here in fact we did a quiz that they did for a newspaper the other day and I did I did really well in it considering I've not seen it I didn't see myself in it no, I never watched me in it. No, I did it, uh, but I never ever saw. I didn't start seeing them until I start, they were putting them on when we were doing the DVDs and doing the talks. And I was sitting there quite gobsmacked because I hadn't seen them for that long. Um, and, you know, I have great respect for everybody who's been it. Wonderful actors, Colin Baker, you know. I mean, there, there hasn't been a there hasn't been a weak link in this chain right up to Sylvester but the show needed a rest you know and I know from what I've been told McGann was absolutely marvellous so I will eventually get down and have a little looky because people are sending me the links so I will see it now you mentioned the, that um, you kind of didn't watch yourself and you went back when for the DVDs what did it feel like reliving those moments almost do you know, it's probably more exciting for me, you know, because I'm one of these people, I love life just to, to, to be there, to happen. It's an adventure, you know. Um, and because as an actress, when you've done something, you've done it and you move on. I mean, you, you don't keep going over it and over it and looking back on it. And, I, you know, the thing with television when you've done it is that if you haven't done it very well, <laughs> you can't change it. At least in theatre, you can sort of go back and change it. And, and, you know, my life just sort of moved on. It just sort of moved on. And so coming back and sitting in a studio um, with that going on, it was all such a wonderful surprise. And working with people like on the, on the DVDs, like with Barry Letts and things like that, I was learning. And I was always interested in it when I did it. I used to go into the editing suite. Um, and I think I nearly ate your microphone. Um, I used to go into the editing suite. I mean, I hung out with, you know, Brian Hodgson from, who did all those wonderful sounds. I, I've always been really interested in the technical side as well, because I think as an actress, you know, everything that I'm doing should be a part of what I'm interested in. Um, and so going back and seeing this and learning this opened this whole new door of, of, of excitement and, and kind of I was exploring it almost really for the first time again and that was wonderful so it meant when I was doing the commentaries I was doing them absolutely in the moment 
and you know it, it was very very exciting whereas I think if I'd watched them over and over again I think I'd have been so over myself let alone you know and you start to see all these wonderful actors that you hadn't seen for years and so everything was coming so from my heart and it was like when we did the Green Death and I was and I just burst into tears because it was the first time I realized I suppose you know I've it, would have been sort of a couple of years after but it was the first moment that I actually took in that my beautiful John was not here anymore you know you don't always deal with things straight away and you know and they said do you want to do that again and I said no it is what it is you know because that was absolutely from my heart now I don't think any of those for me would have been the same if it had all been seen and I knew what was going to happen and da 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 and I think so they come out quite raw and I say some pretty outrageous things maybe but you know it, it it's it was a joy and and seeing all the actors that I'd worked with all those years ago and it was like I'd only seen them five minutes ago it was and you know and to see you know that the wonderful Roger Delgado and the wonderful Nick Courtney, you know, and I still have my lovely Richard Franklin and so on, but, you know, to see these people that I will never actually see again it was joyous and sad, and, but I was thinking to myself all the way through it, you know, what a wonderful job, how lucky was I, you know? So lucky. <laughs> you really are, and it means a lot to the fans as well and the viewers of the show. It feels like that for you as well, I'm sure. Finally, you mentioned earlier that you were part of the show that revealed Peter Capaldi as the new Doctor. I mean, what has it meant to you to feel part of this 50th anniversary year of celebrations? You know, I, I was thinking about all of this, you know, and, and how we, people keep saying, how do you think it's larger? The wonderful thing about this show is that obviously you know the passion and the creativity right from the start of this extraordinary concept i mean it really is beautifully wacky isn't it you know hey have i got an idea for you okay this guy's got two hearts and he flies around in a police box mm -hmm. you know sorry what are you on um but you know it's a wonderful concept and the teams that have done it have all been so passionate and that includes the actors and all, you know, my day, there was no computers, all the work that went into getting those special effects and to create something like this. And you look back on it and it's damn good for even back then without all of what we got now. Uh, and people worked so hard to get things because you couldn't just press a button. And that, so that keeps the show like that. And then all the people that were young and watching it that are now working on it. Writers, Russell T. Davis, you know, some it, Rob Shimon, all these wonderful writers, Stephen Moffat. These were all people who were fans. So you've got this incredible love that's gone right the way through it. But the, one of the most important things, that I think, would we be having this 50 years if it wasn't for the extraordinary fans, which now span not just Australia and America, but I'm doing this thing on Monday, which is for Brazilian and Argentinian and Russian, and you know, and I'm getting all these tweets. I mean, this is just mind blowing. So the fans and the, 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 the creative teams behind it, that's what keeps this show. And the fact that I think we all sit down when we, right since we were in caves, and I think we've all looked up at the sky and thought, I wonder what's up there. And I think that's the universal appeal. You know, and Doctor Who was the first thing to really recognize that and put it on television. And the fact that I'm still here, you know, <laughs> and that it's having its 50th anniversary, you know, who knew? I mean, I know that we saw a cult thing happening when John and I were in it. We could see that it was going to go there. But, you know, I would never, you wouldn't have put tuppence on a bet if somebody says, oh, do you think this will be running in 20 years' time? You go, nah. But, you know, and it's, I call it the Doctor Who kiss, is that everybody who's ever been involved with it, and that's what it's like. It's like this extraordinary thing that I just happen to call the Doctor Who kiss. Once you've been kissed by this show, you are with it forever in one way or another. And that is remarkable.
Yeah. I mean, Casey, it's been absolutely pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.